Hotel. Felix Soleil is the inaugural edition of an art fair, and it's a throwback to the hotel fairs that were done in the 90s. So we have 38 exhibitors, and we've taken over the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. Uh, the poolside cabanas are all exhibitor booths, and the 11th floor tower, uh, which is filled with about 20 rooms of galleries presenting the artworks. We have a broad range of galleries that are, that are here exhibiting during uh, this LA Art Week that's happening at the moment. So today we open the show, and we're expecting a good crowd to come through. People brought a lot of good quality to this fair, and we're really excited about it. Think you know Griffith Park? Well, think again. Beyond the picturesque hiking trails and the iconic movie scenes are decades of hidden histories. As Gil Reyes reports, the Archer Museum attempts to uncover them in a new exhibit. Now, even longtime visitors to Griffith Park who visited this urban oasis dozens of times will no doubt pick up a few new tidbits of information just by visiting this fascinating new exhibit, Investigating Griffith Park. But you know what? The exhibit is not quite finished yet. That's where you come in. We are embarking on a multi-year, multi-phase project in which we will create an exhibition with the help of our neighbors, the citizens of Los Angeles, tourists from around the world. The Autry Museum's Sarah Wilson wants to know, which Griffith Park histories and mysteries do you want uncovered? The museum is now accepting your written ideas for its new but unfinished exhibit, Investigating Griffith Park. Here are some early suggestions. There is a lot of fascination with the old zoo. A lot of people walk by it, they hike to it, um, but the story of the old zoo, who started it, why it closed, uh, is a mystery to some people. Some people think it's haunted. You'll find suggestion stations with pencil and paper placed throughout the exhibit. Another popular recommendation, uncovering Griffith Park's ancient Tongva villages. The more you dig, the more you kind of excavate all these layers of a rich past. Curator Carolyn Brucken takes us on a tour of what the Griffith Park exhibit offers so far. Before the Autry Museum, most people don't realize what was on this site was a World War II veterans housing village. And so this is what we see some of the pictures from the Roger Young village that was built in 1947, housed over 6,000 people at one point. Um, as a response to the need for emergency housing um, for veterans returning from World War II. How long did this go on? Between about 1947 to about 1954. See, I would have never, I've been to Griffith Park hundreds of times, I have never would have well, known that. Well, because there's nothing left except for maybe one Quonset hut that we think is the one used by the Trails Cafe. And then before Roger Young Village, there was actually a National Guard airfield on the site. Um, and there were hangars that were leased by people who were at the beginning of the aerospace industry in California. Uh, you're saying that planes took off from here? Uh-huh. Wow. And so there's like the, just this one spot, and then before that it was, one, it was a Mexican rancho, and before that it had ancestral villages from Tongva people. And you thought Griffith Park was just hiking trails and the observatory. So many stories told and waiting to be told at the Autry Museum of the American West. That's at 4700 Western Heritage Way, across from the L.A. Zoo entrance, in beautiful and mysterious... Griffith Park. The Investigating Griffith Park exhibit is expected to be completed in 2021. Until then, the museum is inviting you to stop by, offer suggestions, and maybe learn a thing or two. Local leaders urge the city to preserve LA's trees. Need some free tax prep? A city program may be able to help. And ever thought about collecting and recycling rainwater? Well, it's easy, and the city can help. All this in City B. Need help with your taxes but can't really afford a professional? Mayor Eric Garcetti has launched the Free Tax Prep LA campaign aimed at helping low to moderate income households get the tax credits and refunds they are entitled to. For more, visit freetaxprepla.com. The impact of climate change is now being felt by the very trees lining our streets. 
Shockingly, up to 30% of LA's green canopy is in danger of being lost within the next decade if immediate action is not taken. LA controller Ron Galperin and Councilman Bob Blumenfield stress the importance of getting ahead of the problem now. These trees are our lungs. They clean the air for us. They are the ultimate infrastructure when you think about it. Councilwoman Monica Rodriguez sponsored the annual rain collection barrel giveaway in Pacoima. Since the program's inception five years ago, over 1,500 barrels have been distributed, saving countless gallons of water that would otherwise be wasted. These days, bullying in school is a serious issue many kids and parents face. That's why the Harlem Globetrotters and the LAPD are using their hoop skills to encourage kids to stand up and speak out. The Globetrotters, we're known as the ambassadors of goodwill. So we go into a community, it's not just about basketball, it's also about having a positive impact. And we found that the number one complaint students have in school today is that there's too much bullying. And so we want to do our part to help with that. Do you guys think that the number one problem students face is too much pizza? No. Do you think that the number one problem students face is too much recess? No. The number one problem that students face today in schools is bullying. A lot of our students feel bullied and for them to be able to have a voice and a mechanism to identify it and to address it is important. Are we going to team up against bullying? Today we are partnered up with the Harlem Globetrotters. We want to make sure that, you know, the next generation isn't afraid to connect with the police and, you know, let them know that we are here for them. You okay, man? Uh, no, somebody bully you? Yes. Why you bully him? He a nice guy. Don't... I'm messing with you. Can I be your friend? Yes. Put Anthony down. We give the message that everyone in the school, staff, teachers, and students are all one team, and that helps the kids to look out for each other and really support each other. Not allowing someone to play a sport because of the color of their skin or because of their gender is a form of bullying. We can come together as a community to really solve the issues that surround our youth. It's a platform where films by Asians and Pacific Islanders can be showcased and promoted at USC. It's also an opportunity to inspire other up-and-coming filmmakers. Check it out. I see now why they gave me ribbons of shame. Because I was beginning to think like American. Ha! <laughs> hey, don't flatter yourself, Ace. It's true! Everybody in this country thinks they are special. It's the second annual USC Asian Pacific Film Festival. We host here both a panel of industry professionals brought in by very famous Asian and Asian American representatives, as well as a screening of student and alumni films. A lot of the problem with student organizations and student filmmaking now is that there's no avenue to really screen them or any way to present them. So in order to have this film festival, it gives them a place to sort of elaborate on their art, demonstrate their work, as well as connect with an industry networks. We have invited API actors and filmmakers from the film industry to come here and speak today um, on a panel, but they're also our jury members. Come on! No, we fight to death! This platform is super important to any, you know, Asian, Asian American, Pacific Islander who just wants to get their stories told, who wants to showcase their talent. And more importantly, it's just giving legitimacy to these films. USC is a great community to have. And I mean, I would never th have thought that a film that I shot in India, wrote in Singapore, would have been finished in America. So I think we're really living in a time where it's global and I'm just excited to, you know, make work with these talented people here. Electronic music artist Moby is honored. Check out some wacky art at a new exhibit and help clean up the environment during a beach day cleanup. All this and things to do. You're invited to the 2019 Adopt the Art, Sound and Vision Award Benefit Gala. This year, EDM artist Moby is recognized by the Los Angeles-based charity for his work as a musician, artist and activist. 
Don't miss the party as Adopt the Arts honors Moby on Thursday, March 7th at 7 p.m. The gala will take place at the Wiltern Theater on 3790 Wilshire Boulevard. For more information, visit adopttheArts.org. La Luz de Jesus Gallery proudly presents the 33rd annual La Luza Palooza, showcasing established and undiscovered artists. The gigantic No Theme Group art show features carefully handpicked works from thousands of submissions. Get a load of what's happening in the local art scene at La Luza Palooza beginning March 1st at 4633 Hollywood Boulevard. For details, visit laluzdejesus.com. The first of the month means it's time for beach cleanup at Cabrillo Marine Aquarium. Join aquarium staff and volunteers in clearing the shore of marine debris. Help put the environment first at the Cabrillo Marine Aquarium Beach Cleanup, Saturday, March 2nd. The aquarium is located at 3720 Stephen M. White Drive. You can register to help by calling 310-548-7562. And that's a look at some things to do. Well, that's it for this edition. I'm Yana Kay. From all of us here at LA This Week, thanks for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. See you next time for more of LA This Week.
Good morning, good morning. If everybody would please take their seats. Anyway, good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, February 27th. I want to welcome you to City Hall, to this Los Angeles City Council. Okay, if you, Baldwin, come up front. Big day today. No, 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 no. I got. I saw s some people in the back. You're supposed to be here. All right. Anyway, uh, Madam Clerk, uh, we do have a quorum. Uh, let's call a roll so we can get started. Bloomingfield, Bonin, Buscaino, Cedillo, Harris, Dawson, Weiser, Caretz, Krikorian, Martinez, O'Farrell, Price, Rodriguez, Ruse, Smith, Wesson. Thirteen members present and a quorum, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Uh, first order of business. Approval of the minutes. Mr. Cedillo moves and Mr. Harris Dawson seconds. Next. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Smith moves, O'Farrell seconds. That brings us where? Mr. President, items 1 through 21 are items for which public hearings have been held. The committee report for item 20 has been posted and circulated for council's consideration. And there is a request to hold item 21 on the desk. Let's hold 21 and prepare to vote on the other items. Let's uh, open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Next. Items 22 through 36 are items for which public hearings have not been held. And for the record on the item 30G, the correct case number is 53953-7193. Thank ten, you. And 10 votes are required for consideration. Okay, so without objection, that these items are now before us. 
Do you have cards on these items? Yes, there are cards on all items. Okay, let's hold those items and move forward. M Mr. President, that takes council back to presentations or general public comment. Okay, uh, let's start off with our presentations. Let's, uh, uh, I'm, I'm so sorry, Mr. Bonin. Thanks. I just want to do a, a quick recognition of some folks in the audience. Go right if I ahead. May. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge that we have the Pally High ambassadors here today. If you guys could uh, stand up. Stand up. Let's give them a round of applause. Welcome to City Hall. Uh, these students from Pally uh, Charter High are sort of some of the future leaders of Los Angeles and uh, really all of our neighborhoods because they come from uh, the ambassadors themselves, like the school population, come from over 100 different zip codes uh, in uh, the Los Angeles area. 100 different zip codes. Some of these uh, students spend two hours to get to school someday. Um, they are 10th through 12th graders. They represent Pally High. They go to community events. They do school tours. Uh, and they really participate in a whole bunch of community activities, extracurricular, and community supporting stuff. I want to thank them. And there's probably as many of your constituents among them as there are mine. So uh, this is the city of LA. Thanks. Okay, and, and Pally High students, stand back up. Pally High, stand back, stand back up. All of you, stand back up. And I want to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you to give a round of applause to one of the former graduates from Pally High, Jordan, that worked for me. Jordan. So give, give Jordan a round of applause. <laughs> uh, Ms. Martinez, can I get you to come up here for a minute? to the president's chair. get some some Baldwin in here all right <laughs> madam uh, president and members as you see this very good-looking group here come on back here dear. begin to assemble uh, around me I want to remind everybody that today is uh, Wesson's Wednesday's food truck day. Thank Mr. Weezar for allowing us to come down. So at lunchtime, we're going to have a lot of tastes and food from my community. We invite everybody to come down at lunchtime and uh, partake. Look, I, re I, I, I have notes here, but I, I, I'm just not going to look at them at all because the people that are standing around me right now mean a lot, not just to me personally, but to this city and in particular part of town where Mr. Harris Dawson represents and Mr. Uh, Price and myself and Mr. Buscaino, I think, has a little bit of it and there may be a couple of other members. But I remember it seemed like a lifetime ago that there was a knock on my door. I lived in Culver City. There was a little eight-year-old boy and his dad saying that they have tryouts for a Pop Warner team called the, uh, the Culver City Lancers, right? And so don't hum. Don't, don't hum. Anyway, so uh, my boys were eight. I go up there to uh, two practices. The coach quits. I go home. I'm the new coach. Never knew that that would be one of the greatest days in my life and that I have met some people that have been friends of mine for decades because of our association with youth sports. In 1958, a group of primarily at that time brothers from an area that Mr. Harris Dawson represents and I represent decided to create a youth football program called Baldwin Hills, 1958. 
1959, they joined a football conference that was called the King Conference. And they were members of that conference until I want to say 1999 or 2000. Their dream, their desire, their hope was to provide for young boys and young girls through the cheerleading uh, program the opportunity to, to participate in sports in a very safe environment and an environment where they would learn more than cheering, more than how to play football, but learn how to be a phenomenal uh, asset to our communities. So they have been doing this since 1958. Mr. Cedillo, who's the gentleman looking down, and he is probably looking down because this organization used to whoop him <laughs> on a regular basis. But Mr. Cedillo was one of the young men that played youth football in the King Conference and was one of the competitors to, to Baldwin. We had a council person at that time, I think his name was Hollingsworth, and began working with Los Angeles police officers to try to work with this program and make sure that it was a successful program. Homer Broom, the first black guy to ever be a captain, a commander, I think, in LAPD, was one of these coaches. There's a guy that used to work in this building named Joe Ruzan was one of his coaches. Many of you may know his son. There was another guy who was just one of the finest men I ever met in my life named Jim Ford, who was one of these officers that wanted to give back to this community. And members, one of the most active and probably one of the tallest was our own Chief Bernard Parks was part of this organization in its infancy stages. And just let me say this, they have had so many people go on from this program to college and to professional sports. Even the former coach of my team, the Cleveland Browns, he only lasted half a season this year, but Hugh Jackson was a member of this organization, and I believe quarterbacked a championship team. This organization is about building character, but trust me, they've won a lot of championships. Since then, they've joined the Snoop League, where they've won a, a Super Bowl and a championship as well. And if you ever want to watch something that's really entertaining, watch uh, the, the, the Snoop League on, on Netflix. And we have Coach, uh, where's Coach at? Came back over here, the star, one of the stars of, of, of the show. But this is about giving to children. Just to give you one big name. There was a guy that spent two years at Baldwin. He spent two years with me at Culver City, went to Nebraska, drafted by the Green Bay Packers, and for two years, this young man led the National Football League in rushing. As a young man, you know how some of the young brothers like to cut little, little uh, details in their hair, and he put a Batman thing on the back of his head and got the nickname Batman. His name is Ahmad Green. They have individuals that they coached that have become members of the Hall of Fame. James Lofton and a guy you might have heard of named Warren Moon. Warren Moon, when he was sworn in to the Hall of Fame, the highest honor in football, he invited Miss Vera Ford and our own Chief Parks to attend his induction ceremony. 
For decades and decades and decades, this organization has done everything that it could to protect our kids and point them in the right direction. There's a man here, I'm younger than him, but he's all gray, so I look younger. <laughs> but Brian Irvine, and his dad was the commissioner of the league and played an important role in my life. If you haven't been engaged, you don't know what it is. Like Miss Ford to my left. If she had a dollar for every kid she had to pick up to take to practice, then take the kid home, all of the money we had to scrape together to pay for the fees of certain kids, all of the kids that we had spend the night at our, at, at our houses to make sure they would make the wait the, the, you know, back, back in the day to make sure they weren't eating burgers and things of that. And I, you know, for all of the counseling we did to their moms and dads, I can't describe to you the importance of the service that these coaches and young people behind me and beside me have done. It is Black History Month, and I think that it's important that we recognize people from our community that have done everything that they can to give back to our community. And I want to ask all of you to give a rousing round of applause to the Baldwin Hills organization. <laughs> now, we would debate if I beat them more than they beat me, but it's more than them, so I'm going to defer. <laughs> I'm going to defer. But we all pitched in and we all worked together. Organizations would lend equipment to other organizations. And I mean, it was our part of giving back to uh, our community. So this is special to me because these people are my people. These are the people that sacrifice sometimes your own kids so that you can help other kids. Now, Miss Ford, Vera Ford, has been involved for how many decades? She's still involved. I was involved for 13 years. She was there before I got there, and she was there after I left, and is still participating in one capacity or another. Her husband was a good friend, a mentor, and uh, passed away in around 1991 or 1992 in the middle of a campaign that we were involved in. But she never quit. She would still be at ball. When you go up there now on Saturdays from August to the end of November, you'll see her walking around with some Baldwin and gear on. So what I thought I would want to do today, Vera, we brought you down here because, yeah, we want to recognize this great organization that you, you basically are the mother of. But I brought you down here because I want to declare today, this day, Vera Ford Day in the city of Los Angeles. Let's give Ms. Ford a round of applause. And we have a resolution signed by every member of, of this council, so I'd like to give this to you. And let's get a turn over to the cameras a little bit. Brian, everybody get in. Where's Coach? Come on, get in here. <laughs> but yeah. Mr. Weston, we have one member on the queue when you're done with the picture. Okay. I'm the one brought y'all here. He forgot. He's a man. I love you. Oh, and <clears throat> in fact, Mr. Black, could you hold this? Or no, Brian's got it. Okay, I'm sorry, Madam President, I didn't hear you. Mr. King Conference. <laughs> Mr. President, thank you. You know, I started with King Conference in the fall of 1967. And like you, I heard that there were tryouts. And so we made this trek several blocks through several neighborhoods over to what was then called Laguna Park. And we had a great year. Bobcats won Western Conference, uh, Western Division of the King Conference in 1967, our first winning season and the first championship. 
In the fall of 1968, we played Baldwin Hills in a playoff at Garfield High School. And of course, we were bested by Baldwin Hills at the time. <laughs> Uh, it was not, I think it was my first encounter with Warren Moon, who we later played uh, two years later when I was at Roosevelt and he was at Hamilton. Uh, so I, I just want to you know, put the record out there. But let me just praise you, all of you who are here today, for what you do. I, I think you've been understated, Mr. President. They at Pop Warner trained the future leaders of our, of our city. I mean, they teach leadership goal setting, teamwork, how to win, and how to lose. And those are the essence of what you need to be successful in life. And so all the parents that, that are involved, all the volunteers, I mean, this is, this is the, the epitome of good citizenship. And so I just wanna, I wanna praise you because you're taking these young boys and girls, and the whole family's involved. You know, we were involved in, yeah, in the yeah. King Conference, I played, my brother was a better athlete. They won the entire King Conference Championship a few years later. My other brother played. My sister was in the Powder Puff team. Uh, my younger sister was in cheer. I mean, our family was involved in the King Conference for about maybe 15 years. Uh, and it was a wonderful organization, and it's where we learned all our skills. I had great coaches like Richard Angel, who continues to coach, and Al Chavez, who was who was my mentor and my, my coach and, and, and just a, a hero uh, for me. And so you've done uh, a, great, a great service to, to our, uh, our community. Let me say to the coaches, and I know you agree with me, Mr. President, we had this conversation when we very first met. I think that's why we got along uh, so well, immediately hit it off, is we've been called a lot of things, you and I. Yes. Mr. Speaker, Mr. President, Councilman. I've been called assembly member, councilman, senator, great titles. But I know you and I feel the same way. The greatest thing we hear coach. is to be called coach. Yeah. To go back, as I do now, to the Garfield Roosevelt game, see the people that I coached, because I coached three years in the King Conference, and to see the guys I coached, to see them as, as men now, and to see their leadership and see how they're good examples of what people should do and, and how they should live. And to be called coach at this age, just to, to have them come up and say, hey, coach, right? It's one of the greatest titles, one of the greatest things you can hear. So I want to applaud all the coaches, but the parents and everybody who's involved in the organization. It's a great organization. I love your colors. You guys had everything. You know, we only had one jersey. <laughs> we only had a white helmet. We put some tape on it. We had blue chip stamps so we could pay our, our dues, right? But you guys had everything. You had the way uniforms and home uniforms, and you had banners and, and flags, and, and, and you had the whole, you know, all the bells and whistles. And, and yeah. so I, uh, I applaud you and just tell you it's, it was an honor uh, to play uh, with, your, with your organization. It was an honor to, to be on the field with your, your team and your family. And I just uh, thank you for all that you do, all that you've done, and all that you will continue to do for our, for our great city and our great country. Thank you so much. Blue chip stamps. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Weston, to You're right, uh, Mr. Cedillo. The two greatest titles to ever hold is father and coach. It doesn't get any better than that. So what I want to do now, Mr. Black, I'm going to ask Vera to say a few words. Uh, just, I know we caught you off guard. I'm going to have you come say a few words. Let's give Vera Ford another round of applause. <laughs> Today is your day. You'll have to excuse me. I get short of breath. I'm just 86 years old now, and my days, my steps are getting shorter. I started at Baldwin. I think I'm the only one left from that era when Mr. Hollingsworth was the council person and the group decided to start at Baldwin Hills. Uh, my husband was one of the first coaches, and uh, Irvine's father was a uh, commissioner. Uh, at, he was on his way to be commissioner of King Conference. And one other thing, 
the two young men that we have that's in the Hall of Fame, I think we're the only playground in America with two Hall of Fames from the same playground. And we're proud of that. <laughs> and I'd like to thank Mr. Wesson. Um, we go way back. He was a, a anchor for us when we started. Thanks to him, we got started on the right foot. So thank you, Mr. Wesson, for your help over the years. And you see how smart he's dressed? <laughs> you know his wife is involved. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the City Hall. Thank you for the, the honor. Thank you so much. I'm going to ask uh, my, my, my dear friend, uh, his dad was, I was kind of like an adopted son of the commissioner of the league, uh, Tommy Irvine. We just lost him not too long ago, but he trained a wise son. I'm going to ask uh, Brian if you'd just kind of wrap this up. Let's give a round of applause to Brian Irvine. All right. um, good morning. Um, everyone that's here either coached or, or played at ball when we go back to the uh, early 60s and late 60s and it's, it's, it's great when you can come back after you played in an organization and the coach and coach in the conference and, and this is what we all do. We serve our community and, we, and we've given back. So I just want to thank everyone. Thank um, Herb for everything he's done and all the support he's given to my family and given through uh, two youth sports over the years. So thank you. And Eduardo, that young man right there, we don't I know coached him when he was a baby. <laughs> <laughs> we know him as Edo. You mean Edo? Yeah, okay, Edo. I didn't know. I was trying to be, that's, you know. That's his nickname at City Hall, Edo. It's, it's his nickname for life, Edo. That's Edo. <laughs> well, thank you, everyone, today. It's been a great day, and um, thank you again. All right. And that last thing I just want to say, it's amazing that, like Edo here, and we, other, we have other kids, and my son's not here today, these kids... 30 years in the future have the ability to stand and look you in your eye and tell you every play what the score was of games when they were seven and eight and nine years old. So what happens because of the work of these people has an effect on our young folk for the, uh, the rest of their lives. So let's give Baldwin another round of applause. Don't forget we, the food trucks. We're going to go in the back to take some photos. Let's follow Mr. Black. Oh, wait, you want to? I'm so sorry, dear. Come on. Oh, is this the president? <laughs> Forgive me. Okay, thank you for having us here today. On behalf of Baldwin Hills, we want to present these gifts to Herb Weston and Kamani Black. Oh. So we want to I'm so sorry. Thank you. See, Kamani doesn't like to be on camera. I think he got a record. <laughs> Lord of mercy. This is all right. This works. It works. It's going in the back. Come on. Thank you very much. Okay. You want another one? All right. All right, bets. Let's go in the back and give them out.
Okay, members, let's move on through our agenda. Mr. Smith, you want to reconsider item number two, so let's go ahead and open that for reconsideration. Let's go ahead and open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. We're going to go ahead and take public comment on item number two. And we also have speakers who have multiple items as well. So, Mr. Herman, are you here? <clears throat> so it's Mr. Herman, followed by Mr. Spindler and Mr. Previn. You're speaking on items number two, 22 through 36, and your general public comment. Go ahead. So, regarding technology and information, fuck Cohen! Because the service committee report on action and plan to implement a badge and reward a system has failed. Thank you, Trump. In addition to my comments on the agenda, Due to mommy regarding the Bureau of Street Lighting, we've established a new criteria of how the Johns can now solicit your young children under maintenance off of Sherman Way. Not that I'm away, but you're away, wetbacks, because wetbacks have asked the Bureau of Street Lighting to report whether or not 20, 276, no, $274.26 will annually start a tax on 2018. While well, the taxpayers don't want new amenities of lighting, so on their behalf, and all Angelinos would like to say, fuck you. 42 U.S.C. 1983 and the Brown Act, up your ass, city attorney. And then on CD3, another street lighting, fuck your street lighting to CD3. And the resolution of various properties under rent control, when you do a good job, nah, 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 nah. not like John Walsh would say, suck cock. And then when you go into the items of the agenda, such as in CD 13, installation of the name Mandy Whore on the Hollywood Walk of Shame. I would be embarrassed to call my name Whore because a whore don't want their name on the so-called Hollywood of Stars. I want to see Donald Trump's name on the Hollywood Stars so that bitch Cohen can't put his name in there who testifies so you, you, about the walk of shame. You're Mr. Herman. Please get I'm back on topic. I'm talking about Hollywood, nigga. Then, when you go to Ms. Martinez on item 33, support transgender. Like Gavin Newsom, I support Smollett from Chicago because he's a fucking racist and he talks about our fucking people. Fuck you. Is the testimony under Superior Court number BS166039, the Brown Act? Why you keep shunning us away on special agenda hidden items? You white collar motherfuckers are like Cohen. You don't know what you want, but I'll tell you what you want. <laughs> A dumbass budget like Krikorian up there. We don't know shit how to budget our lives in the quality that we're demanding. That's why that jackass, shithole, stupid Jose Weezar brought the FBI here. So that we can also throw under the bus Salesian Bishop Mora and the fucking Catholic Church who fuck your kids and fuck men. That's a lesbian gay shit. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about what God hates. Fucking faggots. Next speaker is Mr. Spindler. Are you here? You're, 
speaking on items number yeah. two She's and items mom. 22 to 36 yeah. and your general public we comments. Like, Go we ahead. like Nuri. She's a nice mommy. Okay, so let's see here. What do we got here? Mandy Hoare on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. This is disgusting. Why would anybody with the name Mandy Hoare want to be on the Hollywood Hall of Shame? Filthy, dirty sidewalks with drug needles and shit all over the goddamn floors over there on Hollywood Boulevard. Most disgusting, unkempt fucking place ever. I say, let's reject this and have Mandy Hoare become Mandy Moore and want more of her name the fuck off of your dirty fucking streets of Hollywood, especially where Mitchell Farrell meets his boyfriends. So now we have the community support for Council District 8. We call him Tennis Shoes Harris. So Tennis Shoes Harris likes to have funding for the mayor for only $65,000. You can't buy uh, too many pairs of those fancy Nikes, Marquise, with that goddamn money. No, make it 650000 y'all bitches, yes. That's very good, y'all bitches, yes. So now we have the Midnight Stroll and the Cafe Walk. This is a very sexy event in Hollywood. We all walk the streets, we dress as women, if you're a man, and we stroll the midnight streets, and we try to see how many cocks we can grab while we pick up a cup of coffee. It's so sexy and nice. We get also to see who can dress up like the members of various groups of homosexuals as well. So Marquis Aristotle will be participating this year and he will attempt a gay experiment. Don't want to miss that. That's very exciting. Then we have the ninth district with Mr. Price and his two lovely wives over there in the ninth district for $15 million. Now here's a guy, take note Marquise, this guy knows how to steal the money. And he's 68 years old. He's been doing it for 39 years. Let's give him a hand. That's the way you're supposed to do it, folks. That's right. And then we have these plot maps. These plot maps, they're disgusting because they're shaped like large cocks. And we don't like that. So please don't have these things. If they're going to be shaped as cocks, have them uncircumcised cocks, not uncircumcised. You have your one minute of general public comment. So, thank you, Mr. Puppet. Yes, I yield the floor to my colleague. Appreciate it. So today, at Southwestern School of Law, the Ninth Circuit is giving oral argument today. And this is very significant because Current Price is going to be sponsoring an event there because his lovely wife graduated law school from Southwestern Law School University. Let's give her a hand. <laughs> On African History Month. So they're going to rename the Julian Dixon courtroom after Lynn Suzette Price. Current Price's lovely wife, who now lives in New Jersey, practicing law in the family law area, a fine woman, a fine lawyer passed the bar in her first attempt at the age of 38 when she transitioned into a career. Good going for Mrs. Curran Price. Thank you. Next speaker okay, is Mr. Previn. Oh, and say good. Thank you, Mommy. Mr. Previn, are you here? Mr. Previn, you are speaking on item number two and items 22 through 36 in your general public comment. Go ahead. Thank you. It's Eric Previn from Studio City, uh, and uh, I'm speaking on behalf of myself, but I want to talk about item 22, which is uh, 
Mrs. Ken Vo Ramirez is being appointed, I think by the mayor, to the Board of Neighborhood Commissioners. Now the Board of Neighborhood Commissioners is a body that serves uh, to kind of glance at the rules for the 99 neighborhood councils. And one of the concerns as she steps on board is that we for a number of months have been grieving about uh, the effort we made to change our little bylaws to make it open and clear and inviting to our constituents. We did it uh, through the Transparency Brown Act. We had meetings, we had committee meetings, and then we tried to get it changed, yet there was a opposition by somebody here at City Hall who just refused to allow. We asked for where it was uh, codified. They just, so it's a real, it's a real bummer because we had good faith correspondence to try to effectuate the, it's the ultimate form of civic engagement, right, Blumenfield? This is an opportunity where you're, you're gathering people to vote for you, and in our current system, it is like gathering them to a web of confusion, as opposed to, come one, come all, you can vote for the ones you like. We, because of the previous uh, group, they kind of cut off opportunities for, it's very, very bad, and it requires uh, immediate amendment. Hopefully they can help us by March 4th when we're actually telling voters how to, how to vote. Now, um, item number 23 is your, YM, not YMCA, but it's near the YMCA. Tyrone uh, has a YMCA, and that's where Mitch Englander, we read about the behested payments. It was, uh, it was upsetting because he was giving, uh, getting people to give, like waste management and others, t 10 grand and more to the YMCA, and then what was the YMCA doing for him? putting them on the you know, fundraisers and all sorts of stuff like that. I love the YMCA, and I think we all do. Let's agree on that. But I just don't think that then he writes a check to them from the Sunshine Canyon Fund for 250 grand. It starts to look like you've got the quid and the pro quo, and nobody wants that kind of mess among our children, not, not in advance of the Prop K heist. So let's, let's try to stay on point. Um, Regarding the FAA, I just want to remind you that you should be putting those things on the agenda. And item number two, this is the last one, I just want to make it clear for Blumenfield. He's done a great job of trying to tune up some of the technology around here. The My uh, LA311 app is a great opportunity to uh, file a grievance about a pothole, and he wants to reward those who are, who are uh, filing a lot of grievances about potholes, um, because then they can get some kind of perk. I don't know if it was... It, Explicit, but it's a it's a little bit like Yelp or some of those other apps on Google. The only problem is is that uh, it's nice to see this body welcoming um, grievances, but as you know, and I guess we're getting close to the general public comment, so I'll try to attenuate this a minute. You know, we we do have a lot of complaints in various ways. There's a there's four million of us, and it's hard it's hard in a climate where uh, the technology is not always working so well. And so now, in my general public comment. The appellate court just up the street found, and uh, Councilmember Martinez, I think you were driving on that morning in December of 2015 when a special meeting was called with just 24 hour notice and comments were all denied. So the court found that's a little bit of an error. And they, they found it over at the Superior Court where I think we just honored Kevin Brazil, who's the Superior Court hero over there. But they bungled it badly. And so the other court said, we got to make it clear uh, for people around California. And hopefully, we're going to, in the future, realize that if you call a special meeting, it's a simple point, um, you have to take a comment on that item. And I think people know it. People have known it for a long time. There have been over 100 of them since 2015, when I got a little upset in December. And ours was about Sportsman's Lodge, a little project in our neighborhood that rest of the city could care less about. But we cared, and we came down here to raise our little grievance, to fire our little My311 LA app, and we were told no. So whereas I appreciate you're opening it up for the folks today, Blumenfield, we have to open it up every day. And with that, I would also ask that you uh, make it a bit more equitable down here in terms Thank of you, the Mr. framing. Previn. Uh, our next speaker is Yvonne Michelle Autry. Are you here? Um, Ms. Autry, you're speaking on items number 235 in general public comment. 235. Okay. Uh, uh, relative ahead. to item number two. Uh, yes, relative to all of the technological uh, items and the monies, of course, used for technology, surveillance, uh, stalking, especially uh, as that applies to targeted individuals, uh, impoverished individuals, disenfranchised individuals, single black women, any put in that undesirable category where the use of technology is used 
to target, torture, experiment, subjugate uh, us, terrorize us on a daily basis. This is the New World Order as a targeted individual. On the record, I object to any city funding being used under the guise of technological development in targeting and exterminating and torturing and experimenting people that you don't want to look at. Little petite black women, I'm a woman, I'm not a man. Homeless people, people that are biracial, okay, people that do not follow or maintain your status quo. So I object to that use of any city monies. Use the monies to develop um, affordable housing, especially for black people and for veterans. After slavery, black people were never given the benefits that Hispanic people are given today. Okay, and I'm not a racist. After slavery, we were never given land, we were never given property, we were never given houses, we were never given job trainings. And I respect original people because I'm Blackfoot, Comanche, Cherokee, African, Irish, Spanish, Italian, and French. So I, I need this money. Ms. Audrey, I need I, you I'm to get speaking back on, on item. Right now. So again, I'm use the money comment, I can give you your one minute. to alleviate the homeless problem in developing more affordable housing, which was right for the homeless people, which is 90 to 95% black, and the veterans, okay, before anything else. And I'm for heterosexual now you're housing. on general public comment, ma'am. I'm a woman. You better get that on your record. You're not speaking on your general public comment? You got your general public comment. Okay. And also, relative to women, see, women are continually uh, stalked, uh, the gang stalking, apart from the targeted individuals. Okay, there, there is like this a new kind of uh, dehumanization, uh, surveillance, stalking, sexual harassment of women, especially women that are single, single black women. It's as if, um, not just under the Trump administration, but uh, you know, the system is trying to go back to a time when black people had no civil and human rights protection and poor people also are incriminated. But women also have no identity apart from being married. So on the record, I'd like to, um, I'd like to establish that I'm against this system employing or using or hiring Mexican mafia, uh, mala sabatrucha, uh, dirty cops in surveillance, kidnapping, and murdering women, especially black women, poor women in the street. Thank you, Ms. So Parker. again, right. Thank you. Members? Ma'am, your time is up. Thank you very much. I'm going to ask you to sit down. Thank you. Members, let's go ahead and take up item number two. We've already voted on reconsideration and satisfied public comment. Let's open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. Mr. Smith. I wish to amend the record uh, on item number 20. There was an item that was read into the file yesterday in committee meeting in Plum. Uh, at the request of Dr. Warren Power on the trail item. Uh, it doesn't require a vote, but I want to make sure the clerk includes it in the file that it was approved in Kaplum. And that's the LADP uh, portion. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's noted. Let's go ahead and take up um, Augustus Hawkins. Are you here? Augustus Hawkins is not here. Mr. O'Farrell, are you ready for num item number 33? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I just want to stand and just talk briefly about what we're about to do and why it's so important um, in relation uh, to this item. Um, colleagues, last year there was a 64%, I'm sorry, 64 spike in homelessness of our transgender community. They're among the most vulnerable of all demographics, uh, demographic communities uh, in the city. <clears throat> oftentimes spent a life on the streets, and uh, that gets a lot of people in trouble. We've been working uh, for years with the LAPD uh, to assist and provide alternative services in lieu of arresting individuals, and that's where the Midnight Stroll was born that operates in East Hollywood. Um, this, this motion supports funding to support the Midnight Stroll Transgender Cafe. We're busy at work every month at midnight um, walking and providing services and now we actually have 
a shelter uh, to put these individuals in uh, when they're willing to, to have a roof over their head and then open, case, uh, open cases and get them into a pathway to permanent housing. And so um, I want to thank you, Madam Chair, for uh, your second on this motion. And um, all of uh, us, I urge a unanimous I vote on this uh, because this is one community that is still the most often marginalized, certainly the most misunderstood, and it's a community that certainly needs our help and support uh, because as we've talked about many times in this chamber, everyone deserves the right to live their life authentically and we need to help people who exist at the margins and supporting the midnight stroll and the funding for this program uh, will certainly help in uh, carrying out that value. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. O'Farrell. Members, let's go ahead and uh, prepare to vote on items 22 through 36. Items 22 to 36 are not before them, so they'll go ahead and open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. Those items pass. And this Madam President, there sure. is a request to send item 34 forthwith. Item 34 forthwith. Mr. Spindler, can you please sit down? I'm going to ask you to leave our, our meeting. You're interrupting our meeting. Okay, Mr. Spindler, Mr. you're disrupting Mr. Spindler. The... Can you please okay. ask Mr. Spindler to okay. please leave our council chambers? He continues to disrupt the meeting by yelling from behind the council chambers. Ms. Rodriguez, are you ready for item 21? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on for just a second. 32, 32 forthwith for Mr. Harris Dawson. Go ahead, Ms. Rodriguez. Thank you, uh, Madam President. I'd like to move that on item 21, number uh, 1A, 1B, and 3 be sent back to Public Safety Committee and approve the balance of the report as okay. amended. Very well. Let's go ahead and take up item 21 as amended by Ms. Rodriguez. Let's open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. Thank you. Mr. Kokori, you have a reconsideration, item number 19. Let's go ahead and vote on reconsideration first. Let's go ahead and open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 14 okay, ayes. Item number 19 is now before us. Go ahead, Mr. Kokori. Thank you very much, Madam President. Um, I'd like to ask that the recommendations be amended to uh, add recommendation C, uh, which would read as follows. Take into account the relationship between any changes in departing flight guidelines, instructions, or procedures at Van Nuys Airport on the noise impacts on Los Angeles communities caused by flights departing from Hollywood Burbank Airport. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Buscaino. And Madam President, uh, just for the sake of the record, since we're talking about noise impacts, as I was trying to read that amendment into the record, it was very difficult for me to concentrate because of Mr. Spindler's continuing disruption of the meeting as he's shouting out from the back of the room while the Los Angeles Police Department is escorting him to the door. Indeed, you, and may Kukori. I recommend, Madam President, that we order Mr. Spindler removed? We have, and he has been removed Thank you. as we speak. Thank you, Mr. Gregorian. Let's go ahead and vote on item 19 as amended. Let's, oh, Mr. Harris Dawson. Madam Chair and City Attorney, so my understanding is that these people are now banned for some period of time. It, it, is that the case? Because I, I don't want to see do this again Friday if, in, ca in fact, so we have a rule. It, it, it depends upon how, um, whether Mr. Spindler has been removed, order removed from a meeting recently. I'd have to check my, my, my log, essentially, my calendar okay. to see. Yeah. I don't know offhand. Well, was, as long as we've got somebody watching the door on that. Cause we're, we're watching it. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Harris Dawson. Let's go ahead and vote on item 19 as amended. Let's open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. Thank you. Okay, we have a list of members who are here to speak on general public comment. Can we please, um, if I call your name, can you please come up to the podium? Robert Brayman, are you here? Gina Silverstein, are you here? Wayne Williams? Mr. Williams, can you please go ahead and uh, each of you have one minute of general public comment. Go ahead, Mr. Bremen. Well, first off, I'd like to, um, Madam President, member of the, uh, members of the council, I want to thank you for the vote you just took. We're actually here today. I'm the co-founder of Sherman Oaks and Encino for Quiet Skies. 
We, along with Sherman Oaks Homeowners Association, Homeowners of Encino, and Studio City for Quiet Skies, represent tens of thousands of residents who are impacted by the low altitude flight paths resulting from the FAA's next gen program to, work, to rework aircraft navigation to use GPS. Some of those residents re rearranged their schedules and made the trip here today. If they could please stand. stand We're here seeking your help to correct a mistake the FAA made in May 2018 by having departing flights from Van Nuys Airport make their turns farther south over the Santa Monica Mountains. The goal of Next Gen is to make air traffic safer and more efficient. Yet what the FAA, FAA did at Van Nuys Airport is just the opposite. And in fact, it is a recipe for disaster. The residential communities in the Santa Monica Mountains are in a high fire hazard zone with limited escape routes should there be a plane crash. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sorry, I can't give you any more time. Everyone has just one minute. Thank you. The next speaker is Gina Silverstein, followed by Wayne Williams. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, Madam Chair and Council members. I'm also a co-founder of Sherman Oaks and Encino for Quiet Skies. This map shows the Perry Waypoint in pink, which directs hundreds of aircraft every day and night across approximately eight miles of the he heavily populated Santa Monica Mountain area of Ventura Boulevard to just south of Mulholland from Encino to Studio City. A stacking effect of jets, planes, and helicopters from both Van Nuys and Burbank, and it just so happens that it is also designated in red as a fire hazard severity zone by the state of California. The dismal safety record of general aviation aircraft has changed very little in the last two decades, and between 2000 and 2018, NTSB investigated over 4,600 aircraft accidents in mountainous areas. Our communities have winding, narrow, populated, substandard hillside streets, which makes it difficult for emergency access. It is only a matter of time, we've been told, before a crash will happen. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Wayne Williams. I'm going to call the next three speakers, if they can please form right behind Mr. Williams. David Polster, are you here? David Polster, can you please come up? Anna Hernandez, Anna Hernandez, please come up. And Bill Reynolds. Ma'am, did I call your name? You're standing yeah, behind Mr. Williams? Actually, I don't know what happened. Christine you skipped, Kim. You skipped over me. You're, you're on, ma'am, you're on the list. I haven't, I haven't called you yet. Oh, okay. Oh. Thank Very you. Good. Go ahead, Mr. Williams. Thank you. My name is Wayne Williams. I am uh, representing uh, Council Member Paul Koretz on the Van Nuys Airport Citizens Advisory Council on November 6, 2018. The Citizens Advisory Council passed the following motion. As there has been a significant increase in noise complaints, the Van Nuys Airport Citizens Advisory Council requests the City of Los Angeles government agencies and city attorney take all actions necessary to have the FAA end use of the PPPRY departure point and return to their original departure procedures until such time that an environmental impact report can be conducted, thus diminishing the impact on the foothill communities of Sherman Oaks and Sino Studio City. There was no consultation by the FAA with the community of this change and no environmental impact study was conducted. I hope you will take these actions seriously. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Next speaker is Mr. Poster. Mr. Poster followed by Anna Hernandez and Bill Reynolds. Good morning. The city of Los Angeles has severe dangerous problems and they're well aware of the Exide problem. They're not as much aware of our problem in South Bay where we have two refineries that are using a very dangerous process that is no longer being allowed for new refineries and would not be allowed in, a, in an area as densely populated as we are. I have here the newspaper reports of the accidents that happened at our refinery here several years ago and the ones in, the, in Wisconsin and Texas. The one in Wisconsin required the evacuation of about 20,000 people and that was a minor accident in a refinery smaller than ours in a less densely populated area. We need to be, have the city support us in, in making the refinery bring them up to more safety standards by revising their methods. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Next speaker is Anna Hernandez, 
followed by Mr. Reynolds, followed by Jane Alfonso. Are you here? Jane? Good morning. Good morning. I live in Los Angeles, but I work in, in South Bay. I have uh, too many families with the uh, problems. So what do you think there's something happening in Torrance? When I come into my home, I take all this acid and repair on my family, on my kids. I have uh, too many friends and family working in South Bay. So I need your help now to do something to take off this thing is not good for our country. I support too many years. I need your support today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next speaker is Bill Reynolds, followed by Jane Alfonso and Christine Kim. What follows is a list of elected officials and organizations that have supported a ban on MHF at the Torrance and Wilmington Valero refineries in letters to the AQMD. I ask the LA City Council to meet, to write such a letter, and to meet with the Torrance Refinery Action Alliance to support us in this matter. Also help us get a meeting with Mayor Garcetti on the matter. Here are the letters. The Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors, San Pedro Democratic Club, Teamsters Local Union Number 986, SEIU Local 721, Wilmington Neighborhood Council, Northwest San Pedro Neighborhood Council, Central San Pedro Neighborhood Council, Coastal San Pedro Neighborhood Council, Harbor Gateway North Neighborhood Council, Harbor Gateway South Neighborhood Council, Harbor City Neighborhood Council, Ted Liu, U.S. Congress, Nanette Barragan, U.S. Congress, Maxine Waters, U.S. Congress, Javier Becerra, California Attorney General, Kevin De Leon, former President, Pro Tempore, California State Senate, Al Murasucci, California Assembly. All these people have written that letter, and I ask you to do the same. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker, Jane Alfonso, followed by Christine, Christine Kim and Constance Sullivan. Go ahead. The problem with MHF, modified hydrofluoric acid, is that it forms a ground-hugging cloud that burns the skin, damages internal organs, kills plants, animals, and humans. In 2012, in South Korea, five people were killed, 18 injured, over 3,000 sought medical treatment, just with a release of 16,000 pounds. In the Torrance refinery, there are 80,000 pounds of MHF, and in Valero, there are even more. In 2015, there was a near miss where a 50,000 pound of um, medical equipment, I mean, machinery came within feet of the um, MHF tank. It could have reached LAX. It could kill thousands. In addition to the health consequences, the economic um, loss of sales tax, property tax, business loss, evacuation. I really hope that you will support the AQMD's effort to ban MHF. Thank you. Next speaker is Christine Kim, Constance Sullivan, and Steve Dillo. My name is Christine Kim. I'm here as the chair of the Airports Committee for the Sherman Oaks Homeowners Association and co-founder for Sherman Oaks and Encino for Quiet Skies. Thank you to the City Council and Council Members Koretz, Krikorian, and Rue for fighting to protect the health and safety of Los Angeles residents, school children, parks, and wildlife. The Section 175 request to scrap Perry and to use 2.2 DME so that turns happen over the basin does not shift a noise problem. To understand requires a grasp of facts. I will explain. One, LAWA's report shows that when pilots were being instructed to begin their turns at 2.2 DME pre-Metroplex, the numbers of noise complaints were low and acceptable. LAWA has their own report that shows only 13 individuals submitted 19 complaints in January 2016, which was pre-Metroplex. This January, there were over 14,000 complaints at Van Nuys, and the number's going up. Two, the FAA's March 27 RNAV procedures contained a mistake that resulted in planes turning at the end of the runway. These Thank early turns much. are what caused some levels. Thank you, ma'am. Next speaker is Constance Sullivan, followed by Steve Dillo and Joseph Nitti. Hi. Uh, the Torrance Refinery Action Alliance respectfully requests a meeting with the mayor to fully explain the danger posed by the use of modified hydrofluoric acid at the Torrance Refinery and the Wilmington uh, Valero Refinery. There have been two large releases of hydrofluoric acid uh, in refineries in small towns in Texas. They got lucky. 
the deadly gas wafted away from the residential area. But we live in a densely inhabited area. And an accidental release of this deadly modified hydrofluoric acid here could affect residents of Council Manic Districts 1, 5, 8, 9, 10, 11, 14, and 15, as well as LAX and the Port of Los Angeles. And I brought maps to show uh, the zones of risk. I don't know who to give them to, though. Anybody? Who I'll hand I it to the sergeant. He'll, he'll hand us the copies. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Steve Dillo, followed by Joseph Nitti and Amy Palmer. Good morning, go ahead. Good morning, City Council and members, and thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Steve Dillo. I was born in Los Angeles, raised in Westchester, and lived my entire life in this area. But uh, if you remember four years ago when you had that big explosion at the Torrance Refinery, my house and home in the neighborhood was all covered with ash. So the wind was blowing in that direction on that particular day. It turns out that had that huge piece of equipment gone, instead of 100 feet, if it had gone 105 feet, it would have wiped out a 50,000 pound tank of this hydrofluoric acid, which produced a deadly gas. I was in the kill zone. It would have followed the wind, same as that did. So I just want to offer my support for the rest of the people in our group and, and beg you to please do whatever you can to get rid of this stuff. It's dangerous. It does not belong in this area. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Joseph Nitti, followed by Amy Palmer and Susan Ashley. Good morning. I'm Dr. Joseph Nitti. I'm a cardiothoracic anesthesiologist, and I proudly served the San Fernando Valley for 21 years at Providence Tarzana Hospital. I want to thank you for your actions today on this measure with Van Nuys Airport. You're not protecting me or my wife or making it easier for us. You're protecting the San Fernando Valley. The San Fernando Valley are my patients. When I work 18-hour shifts and come home and can't sleep because the plane's coming over my house at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3.15, waking me up over and over. So the next morning, I'm shaking. I'm not, cl I'm not clear. To go into open heart surgery is kind of a scary thing, and that's what I do. Please help me and help their patients, help the valley through this issue and return the waypoints back to where they were so that we could all benefit. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Amy Palmer, followed by Susan Ashley and Peter Bazinski. Good morning. Go ahead. Good morning. Thank you for your time. My name is Amy Palmer. I live and work in Sherman Oaks. Um, I, too, am affected by the plains, not only because there's soot all over my yard and my, my plants and my dogs and my family, the breathing conditions I'm worried about, but I'm a businesswoman. I have a City of LA business license as the Amy Palmer Group, which I'm very proud of. I went into business last year for myself, and as a small business, I can't afford office space. I just started my company and have yet to make a profit. I can no longer work from home. I can't take phone calls from home. I can't even work on a very difficult proposal from home because of the noise. It is incessant at times. It lasts all day, generally starts incessantly around 6.30, maybe 7, 7.20 in the morning, it's when it's just nonstop, then there'll be a five minute break, a 10 minute break, and then another, I don't know, 30 minute period of where it's just incessant plain noise. I've had to get office space that I can't afford because I can no longer work from home. I'm asking you as a businesswoman in the city of LA to please help us. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Next speaker is, is uh, Susan Ashley and Peter Bazinski. Bob Brayman, are you the same? Are you Rob, Robert Ray, Brayman? Same, same person? So there's a, a gentleman, Bob Brayman, who also signed up. Mr. Brayman is the same person? No, okay. Go ahead. Hi, good morning. I'm Susan Ashley. I'm a resident of Sherman Oaks. S talking about the airplanes is, in the abstract is really hard to understand. That's why I wanted to play a recording from my backyard. I hope you can hear this. This is what we're living with 24-7. There is no break. The planes start at 6.45 in the morning, and we're barraged with them until 2 a.m. This is the noise constantly, all day. So this is how loud it is inside my house. We can't sleep. My doctors are concerned about my health because I'm only getting three to four hours of sleep a night. The government says 
uh, exercise, eat right, get plenty of sleep. We can't do that because the planes are constant 24 seven. Um, and you want to talk about empirical evidence. I now have black soot on, the, on my patio furniture, on my patio furniture everywhere. You, we can't go outside. We can't have a normal life. We go out of town just so we can sleep. This is a very serious problem, and we appreciate your help. We need your help. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker. Good morning. Hi, I'm Peter Basinski. I live in Sherman Oaks. Our house is situated exactly halfway between Burbank and Van Nuys airports. When we purchased our home in 2014, we checked with the Los Angeles County Assessor's Office and uh, the, the home records state that it is not in a flight path. That is certainly not the case now. Due to the changes uh, from the Next Gen program, we now have over 200 flights a day directly over our home. We are at the exact crossing point of both airports' southerly departures as they turn north, the, the noise is incessant and ongoing. It's depriving us of our right to a decent life. We ask you to support uh, item 19 in uh, section 175 and give us the relief that we need and further ask that you um, uh, take Wayne Williams from the, uh, uh, L from the Van Nuys CAC's suggestions to further give us relief from this problem. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. So were Bob and Robert Brayman the same yes. person? OK, got it. Thank you, sir. Uh, Jackie Richardson, are you here? Ms. Richardson, good morning. You want to come up for your general public comment? Anyone else um, that is here for general public comment who has not filled out a card that wish to speak? Anyone else? Can you please do me a favor and fill out a You I did? Your, what's your name? The only person I show on my screen that signed up is Ms. Richardson. Uh, Ms. Richardson, you want to come forward? That's okay, sir. I can, I can let you speak. I just want to remind you that you need to fill out the, the, the information in the back. Ms. Richardson, good morning. <coughs> good morning. Uh, this is in regard to voter fraud. <coughs> uh, uh, the prevention and uh, to make sure it doesn't happen any, at any time in the future. Sometimes people go on TV, this, this one man that came on TV, I think it was Channel 5, 2 or 4, and he said, he committed voter fraud the last time, and we're going to do it again. Uh, the most important thing is to prevent voter fraud, I assume, before the elections begin. The last time, if there were voter fraud, Channel 2 and 4 knew about it because there was such a backlog of, of the ballots. What? One person said, uh, in the future, when the next presidential election comes up, and, and not, in 2000, uh, he's going to, that person's going to be able to vote from home. Uh, I didn't ask him, do you mean by mail, or are you going to uh, vote from home on, in another way? That wasn't answered. Thank you, Ms. Richardson. Okay, sir, do you want to come up? And what is your name, sir? Yeah, uh, I'm Dr. Geng, I'm Dr. Gengmaneng. I did fill out the form. It got okay. lost. Well, uh, we got to, when you're I, done, just make sure you do it again because it's not on here. We need okay, to I, I will redo it when I come out. Go and ahead. I, and I put a graph out that I gave every, to, to be distributed. Uh, I support uh, the ban on M MHF. Uh, please, for the city council and the mayor, we'd like to have a meeting with the Torrance Refinery Action Alliance. On February 1st, 2019, the AQMD finally disclosed to their board that on site there's 300,000 pounds at the PBF Exxon Mobil refinery, including the storage, and 500,000 pounds of this stuff uh, at, uh, at Valero. Uh, and in a large earthquake, it could all, the pipes could all break and it could all get released simultaneously. Uh, the off-site consequence analysis from the EPA, both registered with the EPA for 5,000 and 50,000 pounds, I extrapolated to what it is for 300,000, 500,000, and for both of them, 800,000 pounds. All of LA is at risk. We need your help. Everybody is now in the death and kill zone. Please help us. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wishing to speak during general public comment that has not filled out a card? Okay, Did you I, fill I out a go, card, ma'am? I, I, I will go fill no, it out I, again. I understand. I have, it's fine. Thank you. Just Did you fill out a card? 
I didn't fill out a card. I'm not in the process. I need you to do that after you're done speaking. What is your name? Thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. Listen, I've been here in California since August, standing downtown, downtown by San Pedro between 5th and 6th at the U Mission. And the manager's kind of changed. And the, the, I think one manager doesn't like the other manager, and the other manager doesn't like that. And they kind of work, kind of work together. And kind of like I ended up in jail because they, they kind of knew me, but they kind of didn't. And they kind of frustrated me. It's, it's kind of complicated. The thing is, the place is an independently run um, organization. It's a private charity type of thing. And like I'm a foreigner, so I need to be accepted there. It's kind of complicated. Like everyone has these rules and how the place should be run. And kind of like I have a whole kinds of ideas, lots of experience with being locked up and, and medication, doctors and law and all this stuff. I'm very qualified to handle a lot of these problems. And I really could be a good advocate for the community on a lot of different issues. But I need some assistance and some stability. I'm trying to look for some city officials to kind of like pull some strings to let me get back in there on the second floor where I can pay rent at $103 a month and $60 to put in deposit for safety, for security, which is what the, which is what the policy Thank is you, right ma'am. now. Thank you very much. Time is up. Yes, I'm going to have you speak to our sergeant over here. Thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to speak during general public comment? Okay, I see no other speakers. Let's go ahead and close general public comment. Madam Clerk, members, um, let's go ahead and reconsider items 22 through 36. Okay, let's go ahead and open that for reconsideration. Let's open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. Okay, those items are not before us. Let's go ahead and open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. There is a request um, from Mr. Harris Dawson to take up items number th item 32, urgent forthwith. We need a vote on that. Let's go ahead and open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. Thank you. Okay, Madam Clerk, what's before us? Madam President, Council has motions for posting and referral. Posted and referred. Members, are there any announcements? Can we all please rise for adjourning motions, including our members of the audience, please? Any adjourning motions on my left? Any adjourning motions to my right? Okay. Seeing none, have a great afternoon. Our meeting is adjourned.